Okay, so welcome back to another episode of the wonderful The Our City of ZSL podcast. And for the first time in a very long time, I'm going to be breaking down a sales podcast. Now, for those of you who do not know, there are a number of different things that I do in terms of my solopreneurship out here in Thailand. Of course, having a very large clientele from the Central and South American countries who I teach a lot of TOEFL to. Uh, including Brazil, who I teach a lot of general English to. I do a lot of business English corporate training out here at oil, gas companies, logistics, stuff like that, right? And I also have a couple of private students, and I do teach uh, banking professionals, executives, and credit analysts. So there's a number of different things that I do, and you know, I haven't covered sales in a very, very long time, although I think I should have in terms of this being the most successful year of my life, but there was a very, there was a very abnormality, okay, an anomaly that had happened over the weekend. I mean, not well, I guess you could say, yeah, uh, no, not really, over the past few days. And so if you guys do not know, uh, I've been uh, training at a logistics company about seven times to be exact. And this logistics company is located in the CBD area of Bangkok, Me, I was very excited to get the offer just before my proposal to my now fiance. And because I'm able to get out of the house and travel around Bangkok and not just have to go to the same boring place every Saturday and Sunday. So what I ended up doing, I told myself, yeah, I would like to have an additional class on top of the already traveling that I'm already doing. Uh, just because, man, I want to get out and I want to see, you know, that side of the river again, because I don't live necessarily in Bangkok. I live literally just a kilometer away from Bangkok in a place called Nomtaburi, right? And so with that being said, you know, this podcast is specifically about taking advantage of opportunities. And if you have the opportunity to enhance your skills, to upskill, to do whatever it is, you should take it. But this one, unfortunately, unfortunately, or this little thing had fallen on deaf ears because, well, to be honest with you, the first time I had come in, you know, uh, one of the main people who were there, uh, you know, she said hello to me and everything. I remember sitting inside of a room and none of these women had introduced themselves to me. And I'm just kind of like, just like, okay, this is a little bit weird. This is very awkward. We have them trying to set up a computer and stuff like that, but they ended up being there. Very happy, very animated, very cool after that, right? However, over the next three to four days, you see the enthusiasm begin to dwindle. It wasn't because of lessons, because these same exact lessons, I actually teach a dentist uh, that's uh, got accepted. Big shout out to Sophia Bach. Uh, she got accepted into the University of Michigan, the number one dental, uh, the dental um, college in the world. And she's going to be doing her little two-year uh, degree so she can become licensed in America. She's already a dentist, now a dental hygienist, but dentist back home in Venezuela. And I did something very similar to what I did with her, with my Thai students. And me and her, man, we went on a woo It was a journey. It was fun. It was a lot of charisma and so many things behind it. But for some reason, Thai students, it just never seems to fall. It never seems to hit off the way it does with other students from the likes of Brazil, Venezuela, and other countries. So what ended up happening, man, to be honest with you, when it came to like the fifth and the sixth session, I started having a sour taste in my mouth. I would come to the office and, man, guys, this is a small office. It's one room. It's a bullpen. And then you have the Japanese, obviously, boss right over there. He is charismatic as hell. But the staff, I would go in, I would say hello to them right in their eyes. Now, unless you are completely dumbfounded when it comes to English, which is bullshit, because they understood absolutely everything I was saying on the first day, you should at least acknowledge me after looking in my eyes and say hello too. I mean, I don't know, depending on what country you're from, you know, hey, listen, I've worked with people before where I said hello, she looked at me, said nothing else. I never spoke to her again. She ignored me for seven months. I quit that job. Literally, that's what happened in the upcountry. So I don't demand respect. I just say, listen, if I say hello, you don't say hello to me, I'm going to ignore the hell out of you. Now, I hate to play these childish games because I am not a child, but do not waste my goddamn time. 
And so what ended up happening is I went there the eight time, listen, totally open minded, didn't even think anything of this magnitude would develop, would unravel the way it did. But I went there, I got my dinner. It was such a great day. I'm over here. I'm, you know, I'm all got my little upbeat going, you know, I got my step going. And then all of a sudden I saw, I walked into the room and again, I said, hello, after 10 days of not seeing him, say something to me. They're all talking amongst each other. Maybe they're in the conversation, giving the benefit of the doubt. But you look at me, you say, hello. One turned around and she just gave me a nod after I said, hello. And I walk around the other part and that was just three of the 10. I walk around the other part, I say, hello. And a couple of others just look at me and say nothing. And I just find that unbelievably rude and disrespectful. I sat down and then my intuition, like it literally kicked in immediately and said, Arsenio, okay, worst case scenario tomorrow morning. Okay, not even worst case scenario. All right, best case scenario, apparently at the time was, all right, Arsenio, go in tomorrow morning or send the freelance company an email saying you are done with them. That's number one. But then something told me to just get up and leave then. But I was terrified because that voice was like, Arsenio, you don't even deserve this. If you tolerate this bullshit, can you imagine what the next useless two hours are going to be? That's number one. Number two, you're going to get home late. You're going to get home late and lose sleep for them? I understand. Yes, you traveled all the way out here. It took an hour, hour and a half to get here only to go back home immediately. I understand it sucks, gotcha. But to be honest with you, I sat there, I looked over. Some of the women, they even have a tendency of cold shouldering me and not even wanted to look at me. I said, you know what, okay. I put my shit in my bag, I got up, I walked out and I just said, whatever, I'll be back. Nobody even looked at me when I walked out. And I literally went right to the elevator, went downstairs, took a right, went back to the train station and went to the end of the line so I could get back home. Funny because obviously the one who I always send emails to and all she does is say, hello, noted, thanks. Hello, noted, thanks. Hello, noted, thanks. Hello, noted, thanks. Literally every single email, she ends up emailing me and saying, oh, I think the next day. But by that time I had already said, uh, you could tell them to just fuck right off. So why am I giving you this podcast? It's because you need to know your worth. No, not everyone has the luxury of me to be able to get up, get up and get out and walk out of a goddamn client. I totally understand that. But you got to demand self-respect by having dignity of yourself. If I had stayed there, I would have done what I did back in 2015, 16 and 17 and not standing up for myself. I was chastised, ridiculed, and criticized for the most outlandish comments you probably will ever hear in the face of humanity from a shitty company on the outskirts of Bangkok. And guess what? Because I worked for a very horrible tutorial center at that time, they forced me to continue teaching there. Do you know how bad that made me feel? Knowing that, oh my God, this tutorial center doesn't have my back. Why do I have to keep teaching there? This was the position that I was in five and a half years ago that I will never go back to because I have the power to make a decision to say, uh, no, you can fuck right off. And to be honest with you, sure, money, to be honest with you, I look at it. Time, energy, return, money, and sanity. What does that mean? That's terms. I break down projects in this way. And looking back on that specific project, the time, it took me two hours to get there, an hour and a half to get there. And next thing you know, I finish at 8 p.m., I get home late, and it is hard, it, or it's, it was very hard for me to fall asleep uh, about three, four weeks ago. I had to start taking melatonin because the anxiety kicked in. Why? For what? For a couple of dollars? The energy. I brought the energy, they brought zero. The return, zero. The money, uh, honestly, they should pay me for five hours, not two hours. Considering that I'm losing an hour after 8 p.m. and then I'm losing two hours going there too. So they should have paid me for the X amount of time. And then obviously the sanity, I'm like, am I happy doing this? 
am I happy doing this? And to be honest with you, you know, having to make that decision so quickly and me saying to myself, man, I feel really good, really good that I don't have to go back to that company anymore. To be honest with you, right now it's too, uh, to be honest, I guess that's the number one phrase today, to be honest. I said it like 6,000 times. It's 2.30 p.m. right now. Normally, I would be leaving probably around 4 p.m., maybe even earlier if I want to you, you know, have dinner or whatever it may be in Bangkok. And then I go to a company where I'm just not happy where I teach. You know what's really funny? A lot of people would say, oh, well, maybe they didn't understand you. Listen, what about the hello? What about walking into the room and me saying hello? How was your weekend? You can't comprehend that? I can give you a very good example. A day later, I got another company, well, just prior to this, and it's very, very close to where my house is. I walk in, amazing company. They have a ping pong table. They have a weight room. This CEO is brilliant beyond belief. It's like Google. And seven students, all of which are pretty beginner. But you know what? They gave a fuck. They cared. They were enthusiastic about learning. See, enthusiasm, regardless if you know language or not, there's a student by the name of Bo, literally Bo, as in a bow tie. She knew maybe 10 words of English, but she still tried. And she was so happy. And I gave her a lot of positive reinforcement. Those other women from that company, they weren't excited whatsoever. They didn't care. They were even, they even possessed a higher level of English language, like in general, than Bo. But they came to class with a very closed attitude. I still remember the first part, the first class, man, they were animated, they were happy, they were laughing. By the time the fourth class came around, no one laughed. And it's not because my jokes are this or that. It's the fact that they didn't want to be there. So why the fuck am I here? That's the big one right there. And so with that being said, people, I mean, this happens on such a routine basis, to be honest with you. But to be able, with my dignity, to get up and to walk out and to do what was best for me, regardless of money this or money that, and turning down things. I think I had talked about it last year. I was supposed to do another BIDC presentation back in, I believe June, no, August, no, July or August of last year. And one thing, what had happened was they sent me an email saying, don't hard sell. And I'm like, what? Yeah, the, the someone of the BIDC said you were hard selling your podcast. And I'm like, dude, Thailand's not even my market. I maybe have like two people listen to, uh, uh, if, if I could put this into numbers, people, if I have 200 plays for one episode that I uploaded yesterday, only two plays came from Thailand. Thailand's not my fucking market. Why would I even try hard selling? And why are you even insinuating that I am trying to hard? The fuck do I have to hard sell? A podcast to listen to? Oh my God. Yet you bring a Thai streamer on there and you talk about his money. You talk about this. You talk about that. He could have hard sell, but you never told him that he was hard selling because you were the one that were interviewing fucking clowns. I hurry up and told myself, I'm not going to do this. You're not just going to say, oh, don't uh, say dumb shit and not respect me. But then I swallow my tongue. And then after that, the communication got even worse. It went from, oh, you're going to do one hour to two and a half hours. Excuse me, a one hour to a two and a half hour presentation. You know what? No, thank you. Your communication sucks. You don't deserve me. Goodbye. And that was a really fine, a hefty price tag of a presentation that, you know, that a lot of money that I could have made in what? Two, two and a half hours. But I decided not to because, well, first and foremost, I got dignity. You're not going to disrespect me. You're not going to insinuate that apparently... I was trying to hard sell a fucking podcast that is free. That is the craziest shit in the world. How can you hard sell something that is free? And again, my fiance would say, well, you know, based on Thai people, if you're talking about your podcast, you're hard sell. What? Really? And I don't even remember making references to my podcast. I gave examples. Oh, examples are hard selling. You motherfuckers are so out of touch with reality. It is just mind boggling.
And you know what? Use your platform to go f- fuck right off. And that's exactly what I said. Dignity, people. Stand in for what's right. To hell with your money, especially the bullshit money that that company was paying me. Espe- B-I-D, oh, you know, this is a one-time thing. Fuck your one-time thing. Fuck your one-time money. You're not going to disrespect me. You, that, that's just, that's not how it works. And that's not how I work. Standing up for what's right. Time, it would have taken a lot of time for me to create that presentation a year ago. Energy, lots of energy I put into that. And for them to disrespect me, the money, fantastic, is there. The return, zero. Sanity, zero. Out of here. Goodbye. That's 60%. You got to hit at least 75% for me to consider. That's in those five categories, 20% each. And to be honest with you, at 60% max, but if I go into the time, it's probably a five. That goes down to 50%. That's a project that I'm not going to accept. This is what I use to break things down. And sure, yes, I could have had this amount of money, that amount of money, but I'm 34 years old. I could give a damn about money. I'm, I give a damn way more about impact and being around people who are appreciative of me. I'm 34. I've realized, I've realized like the ultimate life thing that I'm going after. It's appreciation. I want to be around people who appreciate me. I don't want to be in a small little boutique gym with a bunch of influencers who have bad attitudes for an hour just to get a workout. Absolutely not. I joined a gym just recently over here and I have a trainer, you know, that get, you know, sets me up with accountability. But if I don't have a trainer, I go in there, I do what I have to do and I leave. I don't have to speak to anyone. I don't have to share anything with anyone. I'm in there to do a job and to go home. That's what I like. Unless there is someone in there who I love to share the space, my appreciation, my goals, my this, my that with, but sometimes I would impose my will onto other people in 2018, 2019, be that person that brings everyone together, bring that person that brings the energy and this and that. And no one was appreciative of that. Everyone took it for granted. Then when I got quiet, everyone was like, well, what's wrong with him? Fuck you. That's what's wrong with me. You are undeserving of my presence. And I don't say that from an egotistical standpoint, but you are not respecting what I bring to the table. No more. You get none of me anymore. That's how I do it. And going back to that job, that's how I did it. So people, please, dignity and appreciation over everything else. The money will come. But the moment you start selling yourself for a couple of dollars and doing things that where people disrespect you, that's when all your dignity goes out the window. And then you are just a yes man for the money. Please don't be that person. I'm your host as always, over and out.